Lucky here. It's the Pat and JT Podcast. Pat and JT Podcast. Cold as a witch's broom outside. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. And inside. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, yeah, we got some. It just feels like. Um, we, okay, so today before, before we get into exactly why it's so freaking cold in here. Yeah. If you're sitting in your office again and your little little strings start blowing in the wind that's coming yeah. in the windows, will you yeah. take a video of that? We need to post that. Yeah. It was doing it when un- I walked in this morning. It's unbelievable. If you, it's <laughs> unreal. <laughs> the draw strings for the, the vertical blinds. Um, they, they were just like, like, like dancing all by themselves. Blowing in the wind. Breeze coming through my window. I don't know how that's possible, but I think we need some cock (laughs) to fix that right away. (laughs) I know a lot of people that would pay a lot of money to hear you say that (laughs) sentence. (laughs) They'd have been like, I knew it. I knew it. No, no, no. That's what I'm serious. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little chill, but then. I got my little space heater. That thing works like a demon. Yeah. It's awesome. I shut my door and it was like an incubator in there. Well, yeah. Then when you walk out and just into the hallway, <laughs> catch the flu just from the change in temperatures. But I'm radiating heat. Yeah. <laughs> like, whew, it was warm. How about that? Okay. How about speaking of cold and mm-hmm. hot and cold and hot? How about that dude that was found in Alaska living for three that. weeks in a makeshift I little I heard it was 30 hut. days. Uh, maybe I heard it was 30 days and it was like two degrees. Yeah. Um, he burned his house down because he was trying to burn cardboard. I think in his wood stove or something. And then you are in a freaking forest. You can't find wood (laughs) cardboard. Well, everything's covered with snow. I don't know. I mean, and he's a survivalist obviously because he did survive, but I think that probably he wishes he would have maybe done a few things a little differently, made some better choices about what he was burning in his stove. But somehow it caught his whole house on fire and, and nobody knew he was up there and he had uh, some food and he, and he was just working at limiting how much food he ate so he could live as long as possible. Yeah. Urgh. I mean, then, yeah, they, they found him and yeah, it was days. a pretty, pretty sweet little setup with a little wood burning stove that he got out of there. And, but I mean, yeah, did he, did he, cause he had SOS in the snow outside that's a lot of pee whatever he was i don't think he did that (laughs) dude i got that half the s done but i have no more water to drink i think he probably just like stomped it out all right well i assume immediately assumed it was written but what was he living in it was like like a little hut hut? yeah oh even before it burned down or it was just like a like a burn almost like an igloo basically like he just grabbed with pieces a, and parts and piled it up and made a hut and then put snow on top of it and had his wood burning stove inside kind of out to one end so it kind of kept it a little warm inside there. He's just a fire hazard. Yeah. He Seriously. He burned down the one and almost probably burned down the other one. But yeah. I can't imagine. I can't I can't even, so as a survivalist, saying, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I want to go into the coldest part of, well, not probably the coldest, but let's go to Alaska, somewhere remote, and I'm going to just live up there. I just, I don't Sounds understand. Like the, if you're going to just live somewhere, pick an island. Right. I, some with, sunshine. I mean, I agree. Mm-hmm. Although when we were when we were in um, Dominican Republic on that like sixth day, mm-hmm. I was like, "All right, I'm done with having sand in my feet. I'm done." Well, you I'm didn't just have over. to go to the beach every day. <laughs> well, I know, but if you <laughs> live like if you have to hunt crabs for some every day, you're like, "Well, Ugh. I'm going <laughs> to can't the crabs run up on the dock." I'm going to say probably in that situation, y- your your mindset would be a little bit different. When you're on vacation, you can you hit a, a wall. It's like okay. Yeah, I'm done. I'm out. It's no fun anymore. Yeah, so you're not getting served mixed drinks when you're on when you're yeah. in survival mode. I don't think there's yeah, a right. bar in the pool. You're right. Why would you pick the absolute hardest place? One yeah. of the hardest places in the world to survive, and that's Alaska. And if something goes wrong, then that's one more thing you have to fight. You're bare food, basically. Oh. So he's a lucky dude. Very much so. Mm. Very much so. But yeah, he's. Uh, well, he's got a story now. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Who knows? It'll probably be a movie. Why How not? terrifying and the the noises in the night yeah. and just with no, I don't know if he had a weapon or not. I, maybe he probably did living up there in general. I would hope so. If you're, you know, just to be smart, you got to defend yourself. Right. You know, that's, I would hope that you had something, but because otherwise you become dinner for someone else. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, thank you. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty interesting story. Um, mm-hmm. Did you see too, this, this, this story's coming back around you. We had that 
that incident that happened with the the Saudi Arabian and some of the the men from Saudi Arabia that are training in uh, United States camps, and one of them attacked, and now they've all been I think all of them have been deported that were oh, in that right. program. Yeah, um, but they had Apple iPhones. And we're back to that same scenario again where Apple's not really cooperating, even though the judge has ruled that 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 it's a reasonable search. And I know that there was a time when when we had our phones that it was if it's if it's under a password, password protected, that it's kind of like your house is when your house is locked. And you gotta have a reasonable a good reason to search it. Um, but everything's on your phone now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, as we proved the other day when we had this story about Jesse Smollett and him having to turn over a year's worth of Google information from his, you know, but both his phone and, and probably his home uh, equipment as well. But and they, they're not being forthcoming to help them. I don't know. And, and, and it's I, Google gave it up. I mean, it was the court said the heat that Google they had did. to. So, and Apple, and when the, we had the San Bernardino shooter, uh, what, yeah. five or six years ago, yes. they were really wanting to get into his phone. And I don't know how that ended up because they, they, out. Were, they were afraid of, of creating, uh, if they can, if they could break in, we know then you other can. people can break in, but you've got to be able we to, we know you can, you guys, we know we're not dumb. <laughs> we know you could get, you could get into any phone you wanted remotely from yeah. a computer somewhere. We Guarantee know it. you can't. So stop it. Guarantee just shut it. up. And you don't even need to tell the yeah. public, just work with the police behind closed doors, give them what they need. This wouldn't even be probably a story. No, we wouldn't even have heard about it if they had just done it just said okay dude let's sign an uh, an ndr there is that there is that you know what but your privacy thing but it's like once the court says that's reasonable yeah just do it you kind of gotta you gotta give it up and if you don't want your if you don't want your private data from your phone given to the authorities mm -hmm. don't do anything illegal don't murder people (laughs) there you go there's your PSA. Right, there it is. <laughs> Don't do things like that, right? <laughs> Just stop it. But yeah, all that stuff, because they want to find out who he's been in contact with. Which they should. Which they should. <clears throat> which they should to keep other to keep the rest of Americans safe. Exactly. Um, you'll be glad to know that I did go to my basement. Did you work out? I rowed. Yeah? I did row. How far um, did you row? Not very far. Um, but a <laughs> couple, couple pumps? <laughs> More than that. I have to go down there every once in a while, just kind of shake the water up. It's one of those right. water... Rowers, so you're gonna get the water. Put, going you gotta put a costumus in there to get rid of the algae inside. Put a pill the <laughs> uh, there's, I put a pill in it. There's a there's like oh. a drop that you put in it to clean the water. Yeah. So okay. anyway, because I got a note from Laura, and, and I'm like, wait, this is kind of a good idea. Um, she sent this on Facebook via Facebook uh, messaging, and just said, "Hey, uh, I totally get not wanting to leave the house in the winter to go exercise because of the cold." Uh, gym memberships, obviously an expense, and you can just you can save time just walking down to the down the basement. You can save thirty minutes or more driving, right? All of that crap. True. Yeah. Um, she's a high school teacher, and so she says, "I all capitals cannot have my students see me in spandex." <laughs> So she goes to the gym and one of her students shows up. Okay, got it. That's funny. It's just a personal rule. I she totally says, "Totally get it." Not happening. <laughs> um, but there is a free YouTube um, a video series, and it's a married couple. It's called Has Fit H A S F I T. Um, so the videos are realistic in skill and ability. Uh, maybe you've noticed some of the programs you already have to be fit and shredded to get through the video, right? You, you, you have, you do some of those videos. You already have to be in shape to do the, to do the exercise program that they give you like T25 or insanity or any of those things. You need to go back about five videos right. before you can get to any of those. P90X the first week is, I mean, you're, you dive in and eventually you catch up and you're not so sore, but man, yeah. it's, yeah, it's rough that first week. Really hard. And she says, I'm wanting to uh, improve I'm not shredded at this point, but the couple are not screamers either. That's another thing when you have somebody you're watching on a, a video series to help you exercise and they have that, they're really in a good mood and they're really, or they're screaming at you the whole time about yeah. what you need to be doing. Not super happy, not over energetic, but anyway, she says, I, it's, it's important. She says, I'm not in love with it, but I'm a little ugh the first five minutes and then I'm cool with the workout attitude wise until the workout's over and I always feel better with myself after I push myself and it's done. Anyway, they don't edit their mistakes on the videos either. They're oh, just good. real, kind, semi-dorky, down-to-earth, healthy couple that help you work your body out without making it feel like you're training for the Olympics. Awesome. <laughs> That's cool. So I'm going to try it out. It's at hasfit.com if anybody else wants to check it out. I'll, I will I will take a look at that. That's the hardest part is the first 
five minutes of, the, of any it workout. Is. As soon as you get in there and you get your blood pumping, you're good. And because just knowing that when you're done, you're done. And that feeling is the is best, best feeling in the world when you've worked out and you're done. Absolutely. It is the best. Um, and another one from Amy said, hey, Pat and JT, happy to hear your voice is back in my life. So she may have just found us not too long ago. We've had a few people lately. Got some catching up to do, yo. Right? Um, said, when I moved from Omaha back to my hometown, I missed you every day during my morning commute. Now I listen to your episodes to drown out the annoying AF show my two-year-old watches in the morning <laughs> while I get ready for work. <laughs> <laughs> he likes Blippy. Oh, yeah. I've heard of Blippy. YouTube it at your own risk. Any annoying shows you sacrificed your mental well-being in order to appease your family members or kids now or when they were younger? Um, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, uh, Wonder Pets was Wonder one of them. Wonder Pets. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, but the rest of my... I, no, I'm going to say I didn't... You kind of liked well, them? Yeah. Wig, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, the Wiggles... I don't even know if the Wiggles are... I think they're still a thing, but they're not as popular and huge as they used to be. <laughs> But I, I still think about when Anthony and, I, Anthony and I made eye contact when they were Wiggles Live over oh in God. Council Bluffs. He looked at me right when the big red car was pulling out, and I could just tell that he's like, dude, thanks. I'm like, you, you got it, buddy. Yes. You I love the Wiggles. You, if any parent that knows what I'm talking about, the Wiggles, you got it. You don't. You can't tell me you don't sit sometimes, and it just flash back, and you sing the hot potato. You got it. How's it go? Hot potato, hot potato. <laughs> Uh, cold, cold spaghetti, cold spaghetti. Can you just know? It's just the catchiest little ditties. Except poor Jeff kept falling asleep. He was narcoleptic and right? he was undiagnosed narcoleptic. Dude fall, Jeff. And they never, they smart, never let him drive the big red car because he could fall asleep at any time. Dangerous. It's kind of interesting because, you know, I don't know if you could, the environment now, because things are so different PC wise. Right to make fun of the narcoleptic probably wouldn't wouldn't fly. And I and you're right, but it, and they never it, it obviously was for adults were like, dude, totally has narcolepsy. But they never mentioned that. They <laughs> never the said. Kids. They never said Jeff has a problem. They right? never said that. He just kept falling asleep. Jeff fell asleep. He was just lazy. And seriously, I can relate. Right. Sit still long enough. Out. <sighs> Done. A, yep. Done. Agreed. And then uh, also got. Oh gosh, I don't remember who sent me this. Uh, anyway, it's a new TV show that's going to be starting on the 25th of January. So it's just a few days away from when we are actually talking right now. Uh, it's a six-part series on Nat Geo, and it's called Heartland Docs. And it's about uh, married veterinarians here in Nebraska. Oh, cool. And they have a vet clinic, and I, I looked them up because it doesn't say where they're from on the website. But they're from Cedar County, which is up north, up by uh, Coal Ridge, Hardington, Laurel, up in that direction. Is where they're from. That's pretty awesome. And they have a vet clinic, and it's kind of kind of a cool thing. And I was like, that looks really kind of kind of good. And it's got the veterinarians and just and talks about their vet clinic and they handle animals of all sizes. And it's on what what network? Nat Geo. Wow, that's legit. Yep. So if you get a chance, the doctors' names are Schroeder, Doctor Ben and Aaron Schroeder, are their names. And Sweet. I think he's from that area, and I think she's from New York or something. But they met at K State. When they were going to vet school. So that looks kind of good. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Anytime you can see local people on a national TV show like that, that's pretty awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, got a lot of text messages too if you, you want to right rifle ahead. through some of those. You, um, bet. you can text us 402 403 9478 or uh, leave us a voicemail. And this one came in on the 11th. So it's been a few days. Okay. Um, and, I, I, and I don't think this says who it, they didn't say who it is because they said this, they supposedly have information on me, my brother, or whatever. Mm -hmm. The first one that came in, we've been going back and forth. Um, <laughs> has the subject of the intimate relationship Pat had with a lunch lady and how it was exposed inadvertently on hot dog day ever been discussed. And I haven't said that, told the story in a very long time. And I don't know. No, who, you've never told the story. I, I have. I've, Are once you, you sure? Hear, yes. A hundred percent. I know I'm, I maybe it's just the way they phrased it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds much more scandalous, right? Um, it was, and I, I don't remember it being specifically hot dog day. Um, but it was, I was in, oh gosh, maybe freshman or eighth grade Waterloo okay. and, um, love the lunch ladies. I mean, just had a great relationship with all, every, all of the staff, it was of just course fun to mess you did. but especially the lunch ladies <laughs> of all people. Of course it was the right. lunch lady. If you could look in a room and see which kid had a good relationship with the lunch lady, it's the fat sweaty one in the corner. That's me. First name basis. Yep. And so every time I'd walk in, it was uni, Eunice and Sue okay. and all these, uh, all the ladies. And, um, 
they were, they were, it was a, like the line we walk through and they'd put one, like the entree on and then the side on. And then at the end you'd get like a, like a pickle or you get whatever, like one little garnish okay. or whatever. So when it was my time to get my a pickle, <laughs> uni, I don't know if she was not paying attention or did it on purpose to mess with me. Give me like a little tiny shriveled up pickle. Oh. And I, I tried this and it's a dill, dill pickle spear. Okay. Is what it's called. And so I tried to say, uh, uni, uni, ask her why I had my pickle was so small and say dill pickle spear all in the same sentence. And I said, uni, why do I have such a small dick? <laughs> and, I, and I looked at him. I think Sue dropped her ladle and looked at me and just like ever just went crazy. And I could, I'm like, oh, uh, you're an eighth grade. Because I never said that anywhere. Right? Like I didn't, I never said words like that. <laughs> And I'm like, I got like all sh- like tingly. Shook? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're a little totally shook. Totally <laughs> shook. And yeah, so that, that's, that's the, and I don't remember being on hot dog day, but it would make sense to have a dill pickle spear on hot dog day. I don't know why that would make sense. Yeah. Does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, that makes sense. That's great. We never got yeah. pickles. Yeah, we did. I love them. I don't remember getting dill pickles at all. Yeah. Well. Uh-uh. No, the lunch ladies, though, they were always awesome. They were always good. They had to be, they had to be like the most mild mannered or, or we were fortunate. You know what I mean? Just because you're dealing with a bunch of brats. Yeah. Trying to keep them in line, get them through the lunch line and get their breakfast or their, or get their lunch. I should say we didn't have breakfast, get their lunch. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, 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 and I always tell my kids to have great relationships, <laughs> go out of your way to be, uh, very nice, respectful to all adults, but specifically <laughs> the lunch staff and like um, secretaries, the administrative assistants, because they yeah. can get you into doors where normally you may not be able to get into. That's a good point. Get free food, mm-hmm. um, possibly all that kind of stuff. Potentially. Um, let's did, see. Did that ever get addressed again, or is that just you guys just let that one lie on the floor oh, no, and walk away from it? Oh no, no, it it came back it many, many. Yeah, all, the time. <laughs> all I didn't even think it was brought up. Oh no, it was my senior year. I went in, I was in just, I had an off day, off period senior year. So I'm like, well, I'm going to go hang out with the ladies. With the lunch ladies. So I went, <laughs> it was a, and I was, so I walked into the kitchen while they were making, making lunch and they had like one of those sinks, like, kind of like we have in our bathroom, but it's like, it, it's not on a, not a pedestal, but just comes out from the wall. And yeah. That's it. Just touch the wall. And I was leaning on that a little bit too hard and it broke off the sink. Oh God. <laughs> so Uni's like, you, uh, Pat, you got to go. Yeah. Sorry, hon. Uh-huh. Sorry. We, Sorry. We love you. you. We love you, but you got to go. Rolling into 2020, want to thank Coogler Vision for supporting our yes. podcast, the Pat and JT podcast. They've been with us practically from the beginning and, and couldn't be happier to be associated with them and all the great things that they're doing. Dr. Coogler and the entire staff, they're just first class, first class people in general, but first class facility, no doubt. Um, they, they lead the pack really when it comes to the technology, when it comes to having those procedures done that are going to completely change your, <laughs> the way you see everything. Pat and I both had procedures done and uh, I, I only wish I'd done it sooner. Um, and a lot of people I think stay away from because they're a little nervous about it. They don't know what it, they don't know what it's all about. So right. you, you can go to their website, you can go in, you can get a consultation. We were in the office just the other day and walking through there, you're reminded as how streamlined the process is, how non-intimidating it is and how, you know, at the end of it, you're going to yeah. get a cookie, a delicious <laughs> cookie. <laughs> they do right when you walk in the front door, as a matter of fact, Corey was at the desk and, uh, she gets you checked in and, and whoever you're there to see and the doctors there really know their stuff. Um, and uh, more information, if you do, are maybe just thinking about for the very first time yeah. getting any sort of procedure like that. There's so much information on kuglervision.com. You can go there and you can find out everything. You can schedule your consultation. Yeah. You can find out about all the different procedures they offer. And then you can go in and find Which, out if you're a candidate. That's what a lot of people don't realize too, is there's not just one procedure that you can have done. I think there's seven. Seven, yeah. And depending on what your eyes require, they, they run you through a battery of tests and then they tell you these are your options. And now let's, and then you let them kind of guide you as to what is going to benefit you the most for the long run. Um, and we're excited to be working with them this year because obviously it's 2020. Right. So there, you know, this, and if you're thinking about this at all ever, <laughs> this is the universe telling you you're in 2020, maybe you can see as close to 2020 as possible. So this right? is the time you need to go into Kugler Vision. Absolutely. And remember this promo code patent JT 2020. But check in at their website at kuglervision.com for more details. And thank you, Kugler Vision. This is another text, four two four three nine four seven eight. We asked multiple times over the last mm-hmm. year um, about podcast recommendations. Yeah. And there's some true crime ones. Sword Good. and Scale, I know you listen to. I've listened to that one. Yes. Uh, Bear Brooks, B-E-A-R Brooks, and oh, right Generation right Y. And that's from Becca. Those are three different Generation podcasts. Y? Okay. Yeah. W-H-Y. Oh, W-H-Y. Yep. Got it. Um, yeah, I need, I need a... 
new podcast. Um, oh, this, I don't know if this is the same Becca or not. Um, Becca here. Just heard Saturday's episode talking about vag plates, where the Nebraska oh. plates are the first three letters of yes. VAG. Um, my ex, <laughs> my ex had PNS plates. That's awesome. <laughs> He complained <laughs> when they issued it, and the DMV rep apparently played dumb, like she didn't know the. Uh, he she didn't did, get it. Didn't get it. Yeah. Asked him what he thought it said, and he he was too embarrassed to say, and obviously it said penis. <laughs> PNS. I'd be awesome. That's hilarious. Thanks, Becca. At least he didn't have that, and she had the badge, which would right, be great. Parked right next to. <laughs> <laughs> How does that get passed? The, the focus group. I don't understand. I don't know. So many, and we were just talking about that. Somebody said that they had seen a plate that wasn't, it was like a, it said deport them. Yeah. That was in like Oregon or Utah. Yeah. No, somewhere. Yeah, and somebody had that plate and they were trying to take it away from him. Right. He, he had gotten the plate and had had it. And I was like, how did he get it? I, I, I don't understand. And that, that was like easy. You can tell yes. what that is. Yes, absolutely. It was it was plain as day when you looked at it, kind of like PNS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's see. I think let me let me grab um, let me grab another one of these real quick. We have so many of them, but just to scroll through. Um, let's see. This is from Joe. It said uh, Pat, I just listened to episode three twenty seven talking about your neighbors who still had their Christmas lights on this past weekend. <laughs> Technically, the church celebrates Christmas through the second Sunday of January. So going by that, it's okay to keep your lights on until then. I turned mine oh. off on New Year's Day. All right, thanks, Joe. I didn't know that 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 the church did that. I did not either. I guarantee this; these guys aren't following that. They aren't. Rules. They aren't members of that church. I don't think so. <laughs> but that's but that's good to know, Joe. We'll we'll give them benefit of the doubt and say that possibly they're parishioners. Yeah. Well, and and we'll leave it be. These these people in our neighborhood are just dandies. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> in the middle in the street, par, par, cars parked everywhere. Uh, like used car lot, right? And yesterday I had a like a, a, a Patriots bed sheet on one of the windshields to keep the ice from coming out. A Patriots bed sheet. <laughs> Fitted. Well, I can see why they chose that sheet to use to put outside on the car. I suppose as opposed right. to keeping it good inside. Right. Maybe, Maybe I'm not a sure. Sta- a statement. But isn't isn't um you're on a dead end. Uh we are. It's a, we're on a like a cross. Like we are we are technically on a cul de sac, like on the very beginning of the cul- corner lot. It's across so there's a there is a street that goes east west and they're on the but other side of that the street at the at the other end doesn't go either way Mm-mm. right so or, or anywhere i should say yeah there are two dead ends yeah. so you go down and it's a Basically. t intersection with two dead ends Basically. okay because yeah. i i don't on on situations like that like on the cul-de-sac i don't like when people park on the street i don't know I, it, it drives us crazy i'm like seriously we've got <clears throat> plenty of room in our driveways I mean, right. it, nobody's lacking for driveway space. And they end up with one or two cars that'll park on the street. And there was one that was left for a long time, missing a tire. Oh, you, you, yeah. And call, call. We've had cars tagged. No big deal. We've called the police many times. I wonder why. We've had them tagged. <laughs> and do not yep. feel bad about it. Cause it's like, get it. Cause you know, everybody pays a lot of money for a house. Yes. And the lot, if you don't, and we had somebody in our front of our street that was from around the corner. They didn't want their work truck parked in their driveway, so they parked it out in front of our house. So that w- guy missed being tagged by about 12 hours. Hasn't been back. Comes back again getting tagged. I'm just saying. Because nobody wants to sit out, oh, look out there. He, obviously, no. he doesn't. So no. why does he think we want to see his work truck? I don't need to see it put in your driveway. Right. And, and there's and their driveway was, guess what? Wide open. Mm-hmm. There you go. Exactly. No, I, I feel the same way. And especially then you get a turn of bad weather, and then they can't clean your street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I back into it and it's my fault. There you go. And yes, I did tattle on a lot of people when I was younger too. I don't care. <laughs> he was I don't active. care. He was the tattler that was really good friends with the lunch ladies. That's right. <laughs> with a really small thing, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> with a little pickle. Uh, with a little pickle. A little pickle. Okay. Uh-huh. So uh, the, the the royal update, real quick. I know things are things are changing. Uh, as we know, the queen came out with an announcement. It was kind of kind of a no big deal type of thing. It was like, okay, listen, <clears throat> we're going to support them, and they want to move forward with their lives. <coughs> Meghan Markle and and Harry, or I don't think she's Markle anymore. Meghan Windsor is that right? House of Windsor. I don't know. Anyway, Meg and Harry want to move, and they want to spend time split time between North America and UK. And apparently, yeah, we saw her statement, and the queen said. All right, we just need to figure out how we're going to make this work because there's a lot involved in this. Whether or not they get to keep their titles is still up for grabs. Still going to wait and see how that goes. How they're going to get paid is still up for grabs. Uh, if they're going to get money still from 
the what they call the I think it's called the duchy duchy of Cornwall. It's and, and duchy means something. I don't know what it is. D U C H Y. Um, there's two of them, and it's a fund that was created hundreds of years ago in the royal family to support the heir apparent. So right now Charles controls it. So, because Charles is the heir apparent at this point, so he controls it, and so from that they they own land, they have funds, they have all this stuff is in this 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 Duchy? whatever you want to call it. Yes, exactly. And so that's where they get their money from, and so they get money from that, and then there's other monies as well. Um, tax taxes is the other way too that they get money, and trying to figure out how they're going to pay for things. Yeah, what are they going to do? So a couple things came up. Um, them moving to Canada, one problem that comes up is figuring out what are they going to do for security and who's going to pay for it. So Justin Trudeau uh, has has indicated they are willing to look into the people of Canada paying for their security detail, which would be just under $1.5 million a year is what it would cost for him. And the reason why is because Harry's such a high-priced target. He still is because well, he was in the they, military. You'd think they would have to cover it for themselves. Yeah. If they're going to move their decision, they have to cover it, figure it yep. out. That's, and that's what some of the argument has been by some Canadians. Some people are like, well, wait a minute, you know, yeah, that we understand when they do Royal visits, we pay for everything, but forever. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait a minute. I don't know. So they got that still going on. Um, and also she's also going to be kind of a target as well. And they have a son. Right. So they won't be as able, like in the UK, they're able to keep everybody close and keep them protected. But when somebody's across, you know, living overseas and kind they're not in the royal compound, so to speak, and then they're still talking about the, the house that, that they re- renovated for them, millions of dollars in taxpayer money to redo it. It was required renovations. They had to be done, but they were done to their specifications. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Imagine going back four years ago, five years ago or whatever, and talking to Meghan Markle before she was who she is now, just on suits (laughs) and say, you are not only going to get married to a prince, but then you are going to want to get the hell out of there and and not be part of the royal family anymore (laughs) and move back to Canada. She would think you're crazy. She's like, there's no way I get to be a princess. I get whatever. I'm going to stay like in that situation forever. Who would ever want to leave that situation? And now she's out, wants out. I can't imagine. I think for a lot of people, you, you never even toyed with the thought of, you know, that, that she's marrying into the royal family that in any way that you would see in our lifetime, one of the royal members leave the family. But he is eighth in line, I think, eighth in line, seventh or eighth in line. So it's not like he's up there, but he still has duties. He still has things to do. You know, he's got that. That's just part of being born into that family. And a pretty sweet life. Not a bad deal, I don't think, but I think it is. I think they do have a lot of scrutiny when it comes to the press. Um, but, you know, I heard what? Somebody, somebody say this morning, a uh, British expert i don't know they had an accent sure. anyway <laughs> i was on it was on some news network that i was listening to and they were talking about how the um monarchy is that what yeah, it is sure. monarchy has to it has to change like it, it over the over the decades and over the yeah. centuries it's changed to keep up with the times and maybe this is like just something necessary to where it would be really it seems kind of really douchey and antiquated anyway their whole system so maybe this is something that it's going to be it's going to force them to change the system a little bit that if people don't want to be, be you know behind these big huge walls and taken care of by the public blah 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 they have an option i think they i think though for the most of them they do i would you know i mean I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. But but the, the other part of it is that she's going to go to work. And now the reports are coming out that she has an opportunity to do voice work for Disney. There's a video floating around that shows them uh, going through the receiving line at the premiere for The Lion King last June or July in England. And so Beyonce, Jay-Z, standing next to uh, Robert Iger from Disney, the head of, I, of Disney and his wife. And here come... Harry and Meg around the corner and everybody just, ah, you know, and and so they're going through the receiving line. And so they both say their hellos to the Igers. And then she steps over to talk to Beyonce, who I guarantee you would not have, would not have wasted a breath on her five years ago. No. Um, But received her and and Jay-Z and Jay-Z's hair, something's going down. I hope we've cut that since July because that's crazy. Pretty messed up. It was crazy. (laughs) But the video has the um, audio optimized and you can hear harry saying to Iger, um you know she likes she's she's very good at voiceovers she would like to be doing some voiceovers really i didn't know that 
yes, she would really like the opportunity to try. And they both turn and look at her and then look back at each other. Well, we may need to have, we may need to talk about that. And I'm thinking this is like not the appropriate time to right. be pitching your wife. Right. But. <laughs> I mean, you meant. It just seemed kind of weird. So that had been in the works since at least July. So that was, uh, I'm guessing the first time that it was brought up to Iger. To the and, head and of they, Disney. And I assume that they probably, Disney's like, whatever, we'll let you do whatever. She probably went back and pitched it to mother, the queen or whoever else. And they're like, nah, you're not going to be in this family doing voice work for Disney. And that probably started everything. I'm like, wondering. Well, yeah. Cause it probably. They, cause he, but he threw it out there and I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess that, yeah, that didn't go through the steps, the, the proper procedure before it was um, thrown out to Mr. Iger. Yeah. That nobody knew back home. That they were thinking about doing that, but watching it, it's so cringy. I bet. Oh, it man. really yeah. is. I mean, I mean, even just if you're common folk and you're going through the the line, a receiving line, where you're just supposed to say congratulations, it's nice to meet you, this is wonderful, and, and walk on. Hey, by the way, my wife is really good at voiceovers. You should you should check. Yeah, she's really good. She'd be really interested in doing this. You know, and it's, it's a it's awkward. It's a, it's a prince. <laughs> right. It's, uh, it's awkward. It's kind, All it was, those kind of dealings are supposed to be done behind closed doors, so we yeah. don't see it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we'll see what happens from that. So I think that's how, is that everything I've got right now on them? Um, yeah. Oh, I know one other thing that uh, possibly something else you're going to be seeing also is a tell-all interview. With? For? Harry and Meghan. By? Gail King. Okay. The word is New York Post and Perez Hilton said that it's a done deal. Who's going to be telling all? They are. Oh, they're going to be telling all? Apparently. Because they're cutting ties. Oh. And Gail King has denied it to this point, but it has been a Perez Hilton in the New York Post. Ooh. They're both saying that it's going to be coming a tell-all interview. Oh, if she's denying, then that means it's happening for sure. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And if that's true, some people are saying on the inside that it could get really messy. Um, and I'm sure right now, as much as Andrew is enjoying the fact that the spotlight is not on him. Oh, he is. <laughs> couldn't kick the smile off his face right, right now. now. He is he's, so happy. He is like loving Meg. Uh, he is. <laughs> Meg's it. Meg's <laughs> it. <laughs> Not Brexit. Meg's it. Meg's it. All the way. So, yeah, I'm sure. But uh, that uh, that little lapse will end and they will turn their attention back to him soon. Oh, yeah. So well, there you go. That was it. Yeah. You guys, thank you so much for <laughs> listening to our podcast, subscribing, and downloading. Go to patentjt.com. Thank you.